Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Huttons Valley Permaculture. As part of my permaculture design for this property, I included a small olive grove. This week, I'm hoping to bring that design to life. But before I just plant the trees, it's important to observe the site and ensure systems are in place to help these plants thrive. I'm planning on digging some small swales which will hydrate the trees and ensure they establish well. First, we need to identify where water can be redirected from. Sometimes getting out in the rain is necessary to help you understand where water naturally flows. In the middle of this gully there is a spring that bubbles up in the wetter months as it is fed from a water pipe that comes from the roadside swale. We should be able to utilise this to water some of the lower plants, however we will need to have a look along the road to see what can be done to hydrate the upper plantings. This little country road has a number of water diversion points installed and I should be able to dig some swales to make the most of this source of water. There are two points that I can work from to give water access to different levels of plants. My original zone three design had the olive grove just down here, but having observed the site for a while, it's gonna be better here and I still need this area for animal grazing. I've got two sources of water that I can use to water my olive trees. The first one is in the middle of my gully, the little spring that I can hook off a swale from, which should water the lower level trees. And for any trees higher up this little slope, I'll be able to get some water that runs in off the road. I'll need my A-frame and my shovel and matic to dig some uh, swales on contour, which should help direct the water to any of these upper level trees. So first of all, I'm gonna get all that dug, let some rain fall and test out to see how they work before getting my trees into the ground. Not hard to spot where the spring comes out. It's been raining a lot lately and you can see the washout from this little spot. Okay, so this is my A-frame, just a simple device to kind of give you an idea where contour is. I've got my spirit level on the middle here. So I start off with putting one leg where the spring is and hopefully it doesn't fall too far into the ground and then work out where it's level. So got plenty of sticks. I'm just going to push that into the ground and mark the spot. Okay, first spot marked, then we just keep going along and mark the next spot. Sometimes contour isn't quite where you anticipate it's gonna be. It's a bit hard with the fence here to do the next one. All right, so on the other side of the fence, I'm just gonna kind of mark this spot and we'll have to continue when we get up onto the road, but I should still get, you know, quite a bit going off through there. If we have a look at it, as you'd expect, from the spring position, we kind of go at right angles to it because this area has been flattened out by a tractor. So we go across and then we start to go along the hillside and see there's kind of a, a bit of a curve around. It looks like it's taking the water uphill, but in fact, it's just following contour. Now we're expecting a bit of rain tomorrow, so I want to at least get this little uh, swale dug. Even if it's just a tiny little trench, it'll give us an idea of when it does rain, if the water is going to go where planned. And if it doesn't, I'll have to come up with a different plan. As expected, it's pretty soggy. We've had about 160 mil of rain in the last two weeks which is more than the previous few months. There's a lot of rocky gravel here, an indication that the roadway has washed out quite a lot over the years and ended up down this little hillside. Okay. 
Well, there's a little bit of a ditch there. I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit and make sure that it's an easy path for the water to follow. Uh, tomorrow, hopefully it rains enough to get that spring going and we'll see if the water actually feeds along this contour because it looks like it's going uphill at the moment. 16 and a half mil overnight. The little spring starts here. This water barely flows. Most of it goes into the ground at this point. And then down here, you can see there's not much flowing water at this point. It's all gone below the ground. So then it comes out as a little stream just here at this spring. So we've dug that out yesterday and we had quite a bit of rain overnight. So we can see we're on the right track with directing this water along this swale. We do have some breakout points, which I had anticipated. The soil was very loose and had lots of gravel in it. So it's no surprise that's broken through, but that can be repaired. And it's got, well, nearly to the end there. I've just blocked off that point, although it kind of forces it along another washout point. But you can see, just with blocking that off, the water does run down to the end. So it just means monitoring your little swale and watching for any blowouts. And uh, this should adequately water my little trees. Well, I've been really pleased with how my little swale has directed the water um, from the spring. So I'm going to continue it on this side of the fence before putting in a couple more swales. I think that's as far as we need to go. I'm just going to join up all my little marks and see if we can extend this swale along. Okay, I've dug out this little swale. So hopefully the water still keeps going past where I'd already dug. But really only when it rains you can come out and see how that's going. I can adjust it. I will be able to get my trees in along this line um, and I'll still have room to adjust this swale if I need to just to get the water sitting in it correctly. But that one's done. It does make me think that I might be able to actually direct the water out of this one down because I want to have two more trees down below so I might actually have this dropping down to another swale just a tiny one just to water the two lower trees also in permaculture it is about observing as you go and you can make these little adjustments that you might have thought about so that's what I think I might do to get the the water down below but for the moment I'm going to start working on the top ones gonna jump over my old fence for the second swale I just have to pick up from the ditch that runs off the road might be a little bit hard to pick up but it comes down through here and then I want the swale to go kind of along the middle of that slope there so I'm going to start at this point here and then just mark my spots with my a-frame and matic and see if we can get this little swale going. Actually, it's quite steep in this bit here, so I might actually just dig a little diversion drain down to a point lower here, and then I might be able to dig out my swale. You don't need to dig much of a ditch. Water will just follow the path of least resistance with gravity pulling it down. I've mostly finished the two upper 
mini swales. This one chuffs along quite nicely until we get to where the old fence was because I've discovered an older old fence is all buried down in amongst it all. At this point here, I can't really dig, that's the old fence post and that's a bit challenging. And then in here, this old fence is actually attached in some places to an older fence. So this fence in places is attached to this fence that's really buried deep in this um, soil here. You never know what you're going to find when you start digging, even on the side of a gully. So what I've done here, that's the old fence and the old, old fence. So I've kind of just jumped over there and I've continued this little swale over the other side. So what I'm thinking is up at that point where the water feeds in off the road, it will come down and hydrate two trees that I'll plant, one up there and one down here. And then I might just leave that swale at that point. Then over the other side of the fence, I've just done another little swale here where I'll plant a tree probably just in there. But I'm going to hook that in off the road a little higher up, sort of up over here. So that extra little bit of swale ends there, but I'm going to see if I can drop the water down from another little swale that I've dug just up the top there. So viewing it from up the top, I've got the water running in off the road and my little trench will pick it up. Then I've run it sort of down to just a mini swale where I'll plant a tree just here somewhere. And this is the point here that I should be able to drop that down to join up with that bottom swale. I've also dug a little diversion right through here. So it comes in through here. I'm gonna pick it up here, then feed it back along and we'll hook up with this part of the swale. Now this is where you just have to sort of see what happens in the rain. I anticipate actually that this might, this, the water will actually drop out here at this point. So if that's what's going to happen, I'll probably put a tree somewhere around here and then have the water dropping down and I'll pick it up with a continuation of that little swale through there. From this angle down here, it's hard to see where I've been digging, which is just kind of up at that point through there. And well, further up and you can't sort of see it. My first swale is this one here. Now I do want to add in two trees a little bit lower down. I might have to actually do two just little swales. I'll have a tree over there. I could put a tree here and a tree here because they're actually really super short swales. I've only done just a small dig on these two lower swales. I want to see how the water flows through that top one first before hooking this one onto the end here. And then my plan is to then swing that around so that it feeds back down to this lower swale. The swales aren't complete yet. I'll need to test them out uh, in rains to make sure that they're working as planned. But now that they're in place and contour is marked, I can actually get to planting my trees. The swales are mostly on, um, on contour, just probably just need a little adjusting. So that shouldn't affect where I place my trees. So that's what I'm going to get onto next. Before I plant my trees, I'm going to put in the posts that are going to be the stakes for these little trees. So I'll start with this stake and we'll get all 10 in and then get some planting done. I'm having three olive trees on this side of my new fence. So I'm gonna get those in the ground before moving over to the other side and planting out that side. I have 
six of one variety of olive tree and I've chosen these for their oil production so I don't know how to say that one friend toy so I've got six of those which are a good oil producer and that manzanillo which is actually um, good for eating the fruit and also for oil production Before I continue planting olive trees on the other side of this fence, I'm going to add in some support species. These are some Tagasasti uh, trees that I've started from seeds and they well and truly need to be in the ground. So I'm going to add them in here to hopefully grow up. We'll be able to chop those down and add them around our little olive trees for mulch as the system goes along. I'm putting each of these trees fairly close to these little olive trees because these are a nitrogen fixer. So down the track when we do harvest our mulch, they should release nitrogen to the soil to feed the olive trees. Using my sickle, I've cut lots of grass from up here and I've used that just to mulch these little trees and saves on the wood chips. They will grow once they get established without that woody mulch and the grass will keep the moisture in. I've finished planting all of my little trees along this hillside. All I'd like to do now is just cut down some of this grass like I've done here and mulch heavily around these trees. There's lots of this grass that can be harvested and used to cover the soil of the, the swale to help protect it during rain. I'd also like to plant in lots of support species along this slope, but I haven't got enough in my little nursery, so I will probably have to go to the local nursery and purchase those. And I'm just gonna plant this out really thickly. So over time, I'll be adding to it and just keeping on improving it. It's a lot of work to get started. I've planted about 10, 16 trees today. And when you do them properly and the access is really difficult, it makes for a long day. But I'm really pleased at this point to have got it all in the ground. A beautiful winter's day today. All that sunshine is just what these trees need to thrive. Well, there we go. My olive tree grove has started. Hopefully down the track, I will extend it. But for the moment, I'm going to stop with this. I do need to add in lots of support. I want to get in some oregano and some rosemary, um, a few more uh, support trees like acacias, just to, to generate that mulch we need. But I'm going to see how the swales go over time before extending it along the roadside. If you'd like to follow up and see how my olive trees are going or any of my systems I've got here, make sure you subscribe and if you hit the notify button, you will be made aware of when I publish my videos. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.